I'm going to make something for you. I'm going to make, uh, let's see, I'll save the avocado. I'm going to make a blueberry Italian ice. So we'll pass this around. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to make something I'm probably not going to give you a taste of, sorry, because it's for my wife, Paula. Yes. Depending on your personal taste. <laughs> Honey works. Agave works. Agave. Maple syrup. We've got maple syrup up there. That works. If you're nuts, you can add Splenda. <laughs> it, it should, Nuts don't have sugar. I got to tell you, this is the simplest, most logical product in the world. You've made soup before, haven't you? And you throw a, a chicken or the carcass of a chicken in a pot, and you start it simmering. You add some carrots and onions, of course, maybe some celery, right? Now it's working on chicken soup. But what happens if you added uh, a bunch of rice? That would be okay, wouldn't it? What if you added a little cream? That would be okay. How about if you added some asparagus? That's okay. You can't fail. All you can do is make it different. It's just like soup. With this machine, you can throw anything in there. I feel like now it's an infomercial. Yeah. <laughs> but, but really, I mean, you know those, those mints you get for free at the restaurant at the, at the end? Of, they're rock hard. They're like that. Throw a bag of those in if you want something different. You can't hurt anything. There's some out of the front entrance that I use and throw in ice cream to make a key yes, lime sir. mint. There's still different things that you want to layer in afterwards that you don't want to put in the machine, like ripples or... Ripples? What? Yeah, like a bunch of... Butterscotch. Swirl. Oh, uh, well, I do that afterward. Um, yeah, it's on the videos, the, the uh, variegate, right? The variegates. We did, last month we did a var We made Cinnabon ice cream with caramel designs running through. You made raspberry chocolate swirl yesterday. We made raspberry ice cream and then a fudge swirl separately. We put the raspberry ice cream out of the machine into a big container, lined up our one gallon containers, put the swirl on top, the, the fudge on top, folded it, and then squeezed it and put it in and it came out beautiful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm going to make one product for all of you and one for my wife because you have to always want to keep your office manager happy. Jeff, if you can follow me, uh, Jack, if you can follow me over here. I'm going to use the countertop machine, which is a new, uh, brand new machine came out in the summer. Uh, it makes a quart and a half to two quarts. So I've already put uh, a quart and a half of mix in here and I just drop it down into the freezing cylinder and I'm going to add, I'm making coffee Kahlua. So I'm using Taster's Choice freeze-dried crystals. That's redundant. What is? Coffee Kahlua. One's got alcohol in it. Okay. <laughs> so I've got the crystals in there. I I'm a coffee snob. I uh, roast my own beans. Uh, I grind them. I turn it into great coffee. I would never drink Taster's Choice because I'm a snob. What's but this over here? That's, that's, um, Taster's that's Starbucks. Choice. Okay. Um, but it makes the world's greatest coffee. It's incredible, but it's a little on the bitter side. And so a way that you get rid of the bitterness is a couple of squirts of Hershey syrup, good old fashioned Hershey syrup. You will never taste the chocolate in the coffee, but it'll take away the bitterness. Or you can use cocoa. You could use thing. cocoa. And we had some leftover Kahlua. This, like I said, property of Paula Thompson, do not touch. So we're gonna pour that in there too. We're the only machine that you can put alcohol into and still have it freeze. Now this machine is uh, slower than our other machines. This is about 20 minutes or so. And I'm gonna drop that down and just lock it in place. And I turn it on and I turn on the refrigeration and that's gonna go do its own thing. So now we'll get down to uh, the real product we're gonna make, the blueberry. And if you'll talk to them for a second, I'm gonna go get, everybody this is uh, Crystal when you 
if you can see her. Uh, when you call up here, the first person you'll speak to is Crystal. And she can get you anywhere you need to get to. She can take any part order that you need. And she works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <laughs> For minimum pay. Pretty simple, isn't it? I mean, it, you're only limited by your imagination. Even a guy like Mike, who has no creative juices in him, no imagination, <laughs> even a guy like this can make ice cream that's terrific. And I don't care if you buy the book or not, I sell tons of them, but there's 20 or so recipes in there, and that would take you for the first five years in business, if that's all you did. But you can't help yourself. You know, you'll, you'll see the coconut recipe, and you'll try it, and it's unbelievable. And then you'll say, well, how about if we make raspberry coconut? And you'll start doing that. Or what we graduated to was Mounds Bar ice cream, where we take coconut ice cream and run a swirl of, of dark chocolate through it and call it Mounds Bar. But it's a starting point for everything, and it's all so simple. Come on, ask a question. You paid for this class. <laughs> Hmm? Yeah. Hey, there's a question in the back. You make a lot of ice creams with liquor, though. Correct. You're not in your book. Correct. Can you get any of those? Recipes? Only in my class. Uh, those are proprietary to the class. And in the class, I gave them about a hundred uh, uh, recipes with liquor in them, uh, because got to have some reason to take that class. <laughs> Uh, and you all got them, right? And you're happy and you're going to use them? Okay. Uh, yeah, I just held those back for the class. And uh, you should have seen their faces when I gave them the book of recipes that have liquor in them. Or alcohol, as we say. Or I call them adult recipes. And we sell them at the store. We sell about, we always have about 35 flavors or so. And usually about... Um, 15 to 18 to 20 are adult flavors, and they're up here, and the regular flavors are here. Yes, sir? You're open tonight at the store. What time is it open? Uh, my store is open six nights a week from 6 to 10 p.m. That's it. 24 hours. It's like a part-time deal, isn't it? And I'm rich. <laughs> Can I, tell, can I tell them the backstory of your, st your store? What an amazing business. Uh, four hours a night, and they line up to get in there. They line up. We have to go to Tampa. We're trying to make it back. Get out the Jeff well. used to be a hopelessly liberal school teacher. And uh, he would come in here, and we would not only teach ice cream, but we'd argue politics, like two going at it. Until one day he walks in and he hands me a conservative person's hat. And I said, what happened to you? He said, I'm paying taxes now. It's terrible. <laughs> That'll turn a liberal conservative real fast when you are making so much money you got to pay taxes. But let me tell you the story about Jeff's business because he won't. It's, How it's many really, times have you been there? How many none. Times? Okay. It's really, <laughs> it's really funny because he does have a very unique clientele. He's right next to... Uh, this country is one of the, if not the largest, close to the largest retirement communities uh, in the United States. And when you get up to be about Jeff's age, uh, you're sitting down to dinner, and one spouse says to the other, and we know which one it is, okay, you can only have two glasses of wine, and then you're cut off. And one of the other spouse crumbles, and how are you? So two glasses of wine, that's it for dinner at 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, then about 7.30, he, one spouse turns to the other and says, hey, honey, let's go over to Jeff's and get some ice cream because we know what's in the vanilla ice cream. They don't call it bourbon vanilla for nothing, and they don't call it rum raisin for nothing. So they're fooling themselves. They take their little golf carts, and they go off campus, and they go over to Jeff's place, and they're having a nice big portion of rum raisin ice cream, and it's a party. I mean, it's, it's a nightclub that sells ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how Jeff has this incredible niche. It's not going to be perfect for everybody, but he, he, he looked at a situation and said, there's a way to make money here uh, by making a fantastic product. and Charging uh, a fair price. Charging a fair price. Treating everybody great. 
treats, that's the key, he treats everybody very well except me, that's why I don't go. Uh, but it's, it's, it's just amazing what he's done about, and how the business has grown. About half of the people that come in do live in that community. Uh, we are not golf cart accessible, and the rum raisin isn't like this that they eat. <laughs> come on, didn't you ever hear Urban Legend? <laughs> right. You know, you got to embellish a little bit. Okay, it's big. <laughs> uh, but it's, no. it's good. Yes, ma'am. What took so long? I expected that question a half an hour ago, 40 minutes ago. Talk to me later. Every state is different, but there's a few universal truths, and we'll talk about it. And by the way, you know that you can't freeze alcohol, right? Alcohol doesn't freeze. However, this machine, once again, an infomercial, <laughs> but it's true. If you think of everything as molecules, everything in the, in, the, in the universe is molecules, and picture molecules as little balls. A molecule is a little tiny ball. Well, alcohol is little tiny balls, molecules. And if you put alcohol in the machine, it won't freeze. You can keep the machine running for a week, it won't freeze. But if you add other little tiny balls, which is ice cream mix or other ingredients, those are little tiny balls too. And those little tiny balls surround the molecules that are alcohol balls. And so, although you're not freezing the alcohol, you're suspending the alcohol in a frozen mixture. So that's how that can work. Other yes, machines sir. don't have enough refrigeration What's capability to do it. Serving? Same as everything. Yeah, believe it or not, I know you don't understand it so much because you haven't seen it, but it's ice cream. It's not ices or sherbet or water ice or cream. It's ice cream. And uh, in the, the week before New Year's Eve, uh, I make champagne ice cream. Champagne ice cream. And we have to be open New Year's Eve just for a few hours uh, so that people can come and get it to take with them. Uh, on their way wherever they're going. Yes, sir. Good question. He asked, when do you add the alcohol in this process? When I grew up with these machines, I'm only in business eight years, and everything I know I've, I've thought about and discovered for eight years. And when I first got my machine, the six quart, I knew nothing. I knew nothing because I came and took his class and I sat right where that gentleman is and I left here still knowing nothing. Oh, come but, on. <laughs> how to get back at you. But, but what Watch I... Watch it, that's my shooting arm. <laughs> what, I, what I did learn, and, and he knows this, what I learned sitting back there is that if this guy can make what he made, I can far surpass that. Only because, I, no, only because I'm an ice cream guy. Don't forget, he's a machine guy. I'm an ice cream guy. I love ice cream. And the first thing he made was a Merlot ice cream. And it was awful. It, was, <laughs> it, was, it wasn't good. But I knew that I could make it good. And we still do it now. We still have Merlot chip ice cream. But I knew I could make it better. And what I did in answer to your question, when do you add certain things? You can just dump everything in there, turn it on, and, and, and get ready to roll. Get your next flavor working. That's what you just saw me do with the little one. I just poured the alcohol in. I'm going to take a quick break while I, from Jeff talking while I put this in. This is the sugar and water that you saw in the recipe. Again, it doesn't get any easier. Sugar and water. And blueberries. Lots of blueberries. Turn on the infinite overrun control, set it for homemade, uh, for Italian ice, turn on the refrigeration, and now I'm adding my blueberries. Now, I cut back on the sugar content because I'm getting more sugar from the blueberries. No. What did you just pour in? 
Blueberries. Did you do anything to prepare these blueberries? No, just thought them. it says on the thing that you marinate them yeah. or something? I didn't have to do it. I didn't do it. Um, I did say about marinating in there, that would be for blueberry ice cream, but for the Italian ices, I don't find it necessary. Uh, just lots of blueberries. What's with the lipstick on the spoon? Huh? And I'll show you in a second how I used to make this until I met Jeff. Does anybody know when blueberry season is? Yes, July. Yeah, and, and uh, in some places June. But the point is, it's not now. There aren't any fresh blueberries out there unless they're coming up from Argentina and then they taste like cardboard. So, the way I used to make blueberry Italian ice or blueberry ice cream until I met Jeff was we opened up, can you grab one of those tins, those orange ones but don't show the name? This is called a number 10 tin in the industry. It's called a number 10 tin, it contains three quarts, and it's loaded with the cheapest blueberries that nobody can sell in the supermarket, put into a heavy syrup, uh, corn syrup, and a lot of preservatives and stabilizers. Thank you. And that's, you can put it back. And that's the way we used to make blueberry ice cream until Jeff came along and he goes, what are, you, what are you doing? I go to the supermarket. And the blueberries are in the ice cream section, along with the strawberries, the mango, everything and they were picked at the height of the season. And then they were put in these bags and they were frozen. There's no syrups in here, there's just blueberries. Now, you can buy uh, Dole brand, which is famous, you know, Dole pineapple. You can pay more for Dole, but my feeling is those are for if you're serving uh, a blueberries over ice cream tonight or a blueberry dessert, you want nice looking blueberries. But I'm putting them into this machine that's gonna mash them all up to create my flavor. So I buy the store brand. This is uh, Walmart, and they're going to be fantastic. He disagrees. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. We're working on 65% profit when we make this stuff. That's unheard of. So what if it's 63.5% profit? Get the best. I told you yesterday, don't buy schmorios. Get Oreos. Don't buy schmooberries. Get blueberries. Get the real deal. Get what you grew up tasting. You didn't grow up tasting uh, uh, white cream sandwich cookies from Walmart. You grew up tasting Oreos. So get Oreos. Get Snickers. Don't get Schmickers. It, just get the real deal. It, it's not going to make a difference. Same with sugar. <clears throat> we don't agree on sugar. You want to get something that's uh, quality but economic, right? No. Forget economics. Stick with quality, right? We worked all the prices out yesterday to the penny. And how much are you saving with Schmorios over Oreos? Pennies. It's nothing. It's nothing. When uh, in a 24 quart machine, you're getting out six gallons of ice cream. Six gallons. To make, uh, I'm giving away the whole secret here. <clears throat> To make it, let's say your, your bladders cost you $25, which they won't, it's less than that. So you've got $25 of ice cream mix going in. Now you're looking at the schmooberries or blueberries, schmorios, Oreos. The difference is, let's say the difference is $2 to get Walmart, uh, to get a grocery store blueberry or Dole blueberries. Well, bird's eye blueberries, whoever makes them. So the difference, $2 now, $2 spread out over six gallons, 10 servings per gallon, 60 servings, $2. It doesn't make sense. When you're shopping for ingredients, just buy the best, the absolute best. Today we're going to make a cheesecake ice cream. And last night I went to the store to buy the cheesecake and they had a uh, Walmart uh, cheesecake-like mix, you know. And it was 
I don't know, dollar twenty nine. This was a dollar ninety nine. Doesn't make sense. The difference is is so small. Yet, eighty percent of you, when you make ice cream, you're going to do that. You're going to go up and down the aisles and you say, "Oh, Schmorios, I get twice as much for less money." Well, I'll take those. But if you want your ice cream store to stand out <coughs> with all the other stores, the very first person that walks in is going to taste your ice cream and say, "Wow, that tastes." What did you say about payday? I made payday ice cream out of payday candy bars, and Mike said, "What'd you say?" It tastes exactly. It tastes exactly like a payday. How good is that? I could have bought junky peanuts and little caramel, and but I used payday candy bars, and as a result, uh, he surprised me. He tasted it, his eyes rolled back, and he said, "It tastes just like a payday." And that's what you want. Now, I could say that Jeff doesn't know his ass from third base, but I won't say that. <laughs> I happen to agree with him that if it's a name brand product, there is no other payday. There is no other Oreo cookie. I think I know fruit better than he does because I spent a lot of time at the Hunts Point Market. And the difference between fruit only, that's all I'm talking about, is between the, the Dole and the uh, store brand. They're coming off the same fields, but they're separated there by looks by how they look in quality. And uh, if you're think, paying 99 cents for a grapefruit, it's because it looks prettier than the uh, five for a dollar bag. And I think that you're gonna get a more consistent, sweeter, consistent, very big, sweeter blueberry, package of blueberries, if you get dull. That's what I think. I don't think I'm wrong, but I know that when I buy a bag of frozen blueberries and it's dull, I can pretty much rest assured that when I make that ice cream in three months, I'm going to have the same thing. But if I get an off-brand, maybe it won't be as consistent and exactly the same thing. And the difference in money is so slight. No, it could be a couple of dollars oh, per bag. Oh, a couple of per, dollars. Per bag. Holy cow. A couple of dollars over 60 servings. But, Jeff, not everybody's getting $7 for a serving. Six dollars. Six dollars. And They're, everybody will get most five or six dollars. Most everybody's getting three. Every no. Everybody's yeah. going to be charging five or six dollars for a serving of ice cream. That's what it is today. I did for six years. One size, five dollars. That's it. No cones. No toppings. No sundaes. No mixing flavors. One size, five dollars. No sales tax. It's in there already. Five dollars. That's it. Uh, it varies. Half of them are from the retirement area, but the retirement area now is high 40s and low 50s up to 70s. It's different. When I moved there eight years ago, retirement age was mid 60s, but now it's down to low 50s. You young people are moving in. <laughs> I'm sure I'm we can find better things to argue about, but okay. the other difference is I'm putting it into sugar water. Right. And that's a whole different ballgame than putting it into dairy. We can agree dairy, to disagree. Dairy, we can. I'm right. <laughs> I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're getting near. This is ice cream? This is uh, Italian ice. Oh, oh Italian straight ice? straight Italian okay. ice. Sugar, water, and blueberries. Yes. The 350 machine only comes in 220. What you're looking at though is single phase versus three phase. Single phase runs anywhere in North America. You could run this in your living room. Uh, but it, the motors are so heavy that it's, it's definitely gonna run on 220. No, all single phase. No, it's air cooled, single phase, 220. And let's see how we're looking. Oh, that's nice. Wait till you see this. Oh, it's beautiful. And the added benefit, it has the Walmart logo embedded in it. 
Okay, here we go. Turn off the refrigeration. You'll notice if you see one or two, because that's all they have, videos from the Italians. They have these bars in the way. The bars are so you don't put your fingers in the machine. We have guards outside the machine. It wasn't very difficult to figure out. If you don't want to impede the flow, put the guards outside, not on. They take their worst nightmare, which is they can't get the uh, product out of the machine fast enough and turn it into, oh, isn't it nice? It decorates the product. Well, as soon as you put a scoop in it, there goes your decoration. We want to get this product out fast. If you're broiling a steak and it's ready in eight minutes, we want to get it out of that oven real quick or it's going to become uh, uh, well done very quickly. So watch how fast I discharge this. There'll be no, there'll be total consistency from front to back. Look at all, and that color is all from the blueberries. That's all right. I'm not cleaning it. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Look at that product. And all that color is just from blueberries, sugar, water, and cheap blueberries. <laughs> Want to start serving that? You turned me off? I thought I turned you on. Now this is blueberry Italian ices, right? Yeah. Boy, this looks good. No, just take it. Move on. Move no small ones. Move just along. throw it out. So the machine ground up the blueberries sufficient for me to get all the flavor I wanted and plus still leave me pieces so that I can look and say, oh, that's blueberry. Thank you. Boy, you're getting good at this, Steve. Thanks. <laughs> but just right. People do call up, and it doesn't hurt my feelings. They call up and they say, Wow, I was watching your videos and I thought, if, I, if St that idiot Steve Thompson can do that, imagine what I can do. And, and I just think that's great because we want you to be better than us. We want you to put your own creativity in. Thank you, sir. So what do you think? Good? Very good. Good flavor? Yes. Why do you choose to keep the blueberries whole and not puree them? It's subjective. Jeff, I know purees everything. But I, uh, the question was, why didn't you puree the blueberries? I think if I had more time, uh, instead of trying to teach this class, I might have pureed three quarters of them and then just put the rest in whole because uh, you do no, get... that, that, the other machine. Check the other. Oh, it's doing great. Nice. Um, Jeff is absolutely right. He showed me when I was making M&M ice cream that I had M&Ms in there. So I had ice cream with M&Ms in it. His, he ground up the M&Ms, and so the M&M taste was all throughout. It's what I call the fruit flavor. Uh, this product, if you were blindfolded and tasted, you'd say, yeah, it's blueberry. Uh, that's the flavor. But uh, then there's the identity. I can open, take off the blindfold, and I can look at it, and I can say, yep, that's blueberry. I can see blueberries in it. So I want to get both in the product. Uh, but you're not wrong doing it either way. It's, again, it's personal taste. You can see I got a sufficient amount in there so that it uh, gave a tremendous flavor throughout it. Hey Steve, how's your wife's ice cream coming? Oh, just fine. She's going to love it. <laughs> it uh, because I put alcohol in it. This is a much smaller freezing unit. This is a, a 20 to 22 minutes where these are uh, about 9, 10, 11. So I can pull this out at any time. It's ready now. So I'll just... Ready. Turn that I'll off, turn that. off that, lift that up. Jack, can you see this? Yes, sir. All right. Look at how you get the tub out. You just push on the... <laughs> it's frozen. Well, it's not coming out. Uh, well, I'll tell you, I know what happened as an engineer. I had water on there because I was rinsing it. I didn't wipe it off. So now the ice is frozen on there. I should have dried it. You want to try this? Try what? That. You mean taste it? Yeah. Oh, sure. Because I don't. What is it? You all want to try it? Yeah. All right. All right. Come on up. 
You can take one taste. Come on up. Oh, that's good. He says it's good. That's good. Here you go, I got the spoons here. That's good. That's good. I sure did. <laughs> Cheapest I could find. In fact, they were selling it on the side of the street. Oh, uh, you got to start a new spoon. Yeah. I did? Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, that's what they all say. Sure. Yeah, it's right there. Kahlua coffee. Just take one. I don't have enough to give out to everyone. How smart so I am. Just take one. How great looking I am. How much better looking in person than I am. Uh, is that a fresh spoon? It is. She handed it to me. Okay. She cut in front of me. <laughs> the noise. Gee, some people. Right. And you're not going to change. Here you go. Nothing will change. You got one. Just add some sugar. Here you go. Do it the taste. Now, I did a variation of this. I did my coffee ice cream at Christmas time, and uh, Paula's father was, for many years, New York Police Department. And we all know the joke about all police departments. So I made an ice cream dedicated to the NYPD, and I called it NYPD. It was coffee, ice cream, and donuts. <laughs> Glazed donuts. It was good. Uh, I put some uh, maple syrup in there, too, and uh, it, it was spectacular. And you're welcome to steal the formula. It's up at the website. All my formulas, about 300 of them are up at the website. So good?